I'm now going to look at the basics of applying materials with Radeon Pro Render. There is one thing which I will note before I even start working in Houdini, and that is that I have imported a native material library for Radeon Pro Render. This library is part of the Radeon Pro Render suite and contains a list of material presets, all of which we can use. However, at the moment they are still very limited in terms of their functionality. This material library has to be installed separately. When you download this library, you get an exe file within the library, and this can be used to set up the plugin. This is something which they've done with the main Radeon Pro Render plugin as well. That also now uses an exe file instead of a Python file to set up the renderer. I'll not go through the process of installing the library as this is almost identical to Radeon Pro Render. However, I do need to say where we get the library from. We'll be getting it from the GitHub page. In this case, I'll be getting it from the GitHub page for Radeon Pro Render. This will be under the GPU Open Libraries and SDKs. If we scroll to the bottom of this page, there is a download link, and this is where we can download the library. Once the material library is installed, there will be an Import Material option under the RPR drop-down menu. This will bring up a browser for the material library, and we can use this to import materials into our scene. So I'll start setting a scene under the stage context. I'll start by getting a plane for the ground. Then I'll want a couple of other objects to import, and I'll just be importing some spheres into this scene. I'll also add a sphere which has some displacement to give some variation. I'm currently rendering with Karma. I'll change that to Radeon Pro Render. I can then add a transform node so that I can place them in the scene. All of the imported objects can then be merged together. There is another object that I'll add to the scene, so I'll get another SOP import, and I'm going to bring in my insect prototype character. I'll then merge this with the scene as well. And I'll stop by applying the materials which I've already created for this character. This character has three materials attached. They are within its rig, and there are three principled shaders. So we are going to be referencing these materials, we will also be creating materials, and we will be using material presets. Just a note, this is an explanation of how you can add materials, it is not an instructional video on USD, and the workflows here may not be optimal. So I will add a material library node, I will also add a reference node. The merge for our objects will then be connected to the first input of the reference node. The reference node will allow us to use a material as an instance, rather than creating multiple versions of the same material, and this should generally be more efficient. I'll connect our material library to the second input of the reference node. For the moment there is one parameter that we need to set on this reference parameter, and that will be the reference type. I'll change this parameter to Reference from multi-input. So for this material library, I'm going to be referring to an external material library. I'll first make sure that I clear all the existing materials. Technically there aren't any, but we want this parameter to be empty. I'll then click on the Autofill Materials button. I'll then set the material network. In this case it will be under the Object Context, under the Rig node. I'll follow this path down until I find my material network, and I'll select the material network itself. I can then accept, and all the materials within that material network should be added to this node. We should also have a material path added to the scene, and all of our materials should be added beneath this path. I can then get an assigned material node, and we will also need a configure layer node. The warning we're getting in the reference node is because I have not configured a save path for my USD files. I'll set up a USD path so that I can save this there. This will include the USD file that I'll be saving to. 
The assigned materials node can then be connected to the reference node. I'll rename the input node for my insect so it is easier to identify. I can then select my assigned material node and I'll drag and drop the insect mesh onto the primitives field. I can add my materials to the material path and this should attach the material to our geometry. At the moment I can only add one material at a time. There are some fundamental differences between the way Houdini is designed and the way USD is designed. One of the places where they differ fundamentally is dealing with multiple materials. Instead of using my attributes to define the materials, I'm going to duplicate this mesh twice. I'll rename the first of these Insect Abdomen. I will then check the box Import Group and here I will import my abdomen group. I can then do the same for my head group. And I can do it once again for my leg group. I'm now importing all the parts of the insect separately and I can assign the materials again. So now I'll have the insect abdomen. This will have the abdomen material. The insect head will have the head material. I'll then bring in the insect legs and the insect leg material. And we'll see that this is not working properly, but that everything has my insect leg material. This is because I did not properly specify the group for my legs. So that would be the basic way of setting up materials with groups. This is of course just a very basic setup. USD does allow for far more complex and flexible setups than this. Next I'll get a dome light. I can use an HDRI file here. This file is a file which I got from HDRI Haven, which is going to be renamed into Polyhaven. And there are a lot of free HDRI files there. I'll merge this light with the rest of my network, and this will allow us to use the HDRI to light the scene. So that's referencing materials from a material network elsewhere in Houdini. Next I'll look at adding materials within USD itself, and I'll start with the Material X presets. I'll use another assign material node so we can keep things neat. Under the RPR drop down menu, I'll open the material library. In this case, I'm just going to select the stone preset. I'll click on one of the presets and it will add a material library to my network. I'll separate this node from the network and this node can be reconnected in multiple ways. I could connect it directly to my reference or I could connect it to my existing material library. I'll then find my displaced sphere. And I'll rename this to rock so it is easier to find. We can also rename the other import node to sphere. I can then work on my next assigned materials node. I will drag and drop my rock material onto the material path. I will then add my rocks to the primitives. And I now have a stone material assigned. I'm going to do something similar for the plane. I'll add a material to this assigned material node and I'll connect the primitive path to the plane here. I'll then open the material library. In this case, I'll select metal and I'm going to make this a polished brass surface. I'll add this to my material chain. I will then set the material path in my assigned material node to be the polished brass material. Once more, this is an extremely basic approach to assigning materials. And unfortunately, at the time of setting up this video, most of the parameters for the Radeon Pro rendered materials are not actually exposed in the materials. So at the moment, they purely are functioning as presets. So I've added a few more spheres to the scene, and now we're going to add some materials in a different way. I'm going to get a material library, and I'll duplicate my configure layer node and I'll attach it to this material. I can then enter this materials node, and we are able to add whatever shaders we want to in this node. The main shader that we'll use is the principal shader. 
One of the biggest advantages of sticking with the principled shader is that it will work for most of the rendering engines in Houdini. So for example here the Material X shaders will not work with Karma. Material X is an open format, but it is not yet natively supported within Houdini. I'll give this node a color and an emission, and I'll up the emission intensity. I can then assign the material in exactly the same way. I'll select one of my spheres for the mesh, and then I'll set the material path with my principal shader. Another thing which I will do is once I've added a material within this material library, I'll clear out all the old references and I will autofill the materials for the library. I can return to ProRender and we should have an emissive material on our sphere. There are other kind of shaders which we can use. For example, we have an RPR folder here as well. There are some shaders which we can use here. These will only work with ProRender. For example, we have a Tune shader here. The main shader of the ProRender shaders will be the Uber shader. This is an equivalent of the principal shader. Personally, I'd generally stick with the principal shader instead of using these. Another shader which you can look at here is the Material X shader. This shader will allow us to directly use Material X files. So for example, if I go into my library and go into the materials for my library, I can directly reference these materials with this shader. We can add four materials here. And I'll set my spheres to be my primitives. The materials which I've just added to my material library are not showing up. This is because I have not updated the material library. I'll clear out all the existing parameters, and then I'll autofill the materials. I can now return to adding my materials to the geometry. I'll set the first of these with the material X node, and this is referring to an emissive material. I can then link my tune shader to one of my spheres. And I'll just need to make sure that I'm not selecting a sphere which has already had a material assigned to it. And that's generally it. That is how you would assign the materials, including the ProRender library materials.